Hey, welcome back. It's Lynx. For this week's video, I wanted to do a follow-up on my music marketing, music promotion series where I use a conversion campaign. So if you haven't checked out my past few videos on this, be sure to check them out. The first video was me trying to use a playlist promotion campaign and the results of that. The second video was about using a Facebook traffic campaign and a review of that and the results of that. And this week we're going to talk about a conversion campaign that I use to try and promote my latest single, Say What You Want. If you haven't checked it out, I'll link it below and up above. Before we get into it, like and subscribe to stay updated on my videos. My plan is just to kind of continue this series along with some other series that I have with trying to promote my music in the best way possible and just try to optimize for the best results. That's what this is all about. And if you guys have seen my old videos, you are well aware that I show the pros and the cons, the trials and the errors, the good and the bad. Here we are again with a review of a conversion campaign using Facebook ads. So the difference between traffic campaigns and conversion campaigns is that a traffic campaign optimizes for link clicks. If you've watched my last video, I made a Facebook ad that ran on Instagram on Instagram stories. And if people swipe up on Instagram stories, they were directed to my Spotify page. The traffic campaign algorithm is gonna target people who are gonna click your ad with bots and mistakes all included. And with a conversion campaign, the algorithm is gonna track people who actually take action. So this is the cool thing. With the conversion campaign, it gets a little tricky and I'm not gonna get into it with this video, but I will later. But you have to install a Facebook pixel to track actions that people take on the page that you direct them to. In my case, and I will show you all of this, so don't be frightened, and I will show you the ad that I made. I'm still running my ads on Instagram stories. People will swipe up if they're interested in the song, be directed to a landing page that I created, go through the landing page to either Spotify or Apple Music, and the people that actually click on play on Spotify or play on Apple Music, those are the people that the algorithm is going to keep retargeting is a little bit more secure because there's a landing page in between the ad and the final thing. It kind of roots out all those bots and mistakes and accidental swipe ups. So in this way, you're getting a little bit more of a secure and stable idea of how your ad is doing and if you need to make any changes or not. I don't know if you guys hear this, my cat is meowing and I need to bring him inside. Hi, boo boo. My cat. Marius, named after guys, Marius. Anyways, so I am gonna bring you over to my Spotify analytics to show you the direct results of this campaign that I'm able to track without documenting like a bunch of data of this conversion campaign. And I'm using Spotify because they, they have a really nice analytics tool where you can track uh, your plays and streams and listeners and all that. Hi, baby. I'm gonna show you my Spotify analytics to show you how this campaign went and then I'm going to show you my landing page and a brief overview of my ad. Stick around and hopefully this will help you in making your own Facebook ad campaigns. Hello. So I'm gonna bring you on over. Alas, we are here again on my Spotify for artists tool. If you've watched my last few videos, monthly listeners have gone down again. So straight off, I just wanna say, I'm still in this learning phase where I'm trying to figure out how to optimize everything. So I'm at 1,402 today. It jumps around day to day but it pretty much hovers around 1,400. I am also in the process, and I'm gonna make another video on this, of transferring all of my Sarah Kendall releases over to Lynx. So if you don't know about this, I do have another artist project that I've had for six years that has more of an audience. And I started Lynx this year and I need to combine these two projects. So we'll see if the numbers drastically change on this page. I don't know if I'm gonna lose all the progress I made under Sarah Kendall or what's gonna happen, but I'm gonna document that for you guys too. But anyways, this number may jump up because of that, but it might not. I actually have no idea if anything's gonna transfer over. So, you know, don't change your artist name. <laughs> I'd started the campaign a few days after I released Say What You Want, but what I was doing was editing the ad so much during this whole week. So what I didn't realize is the algorithm has a learning phase. So you need to get up to 50 conversions before the algorithm like really figures out who 
to Target. So I was like messing with this ad. So it was just re-entering the learning phase over and over again. So nothing really happened until I was like, I need to stop editing this ad. Also the audio was glitching and the ad was horrible and I'm very embarrassed that it was, it was running and I was actively spending money on it, by the way. So I stopped editing it October 1st. Things are not changing. And in fact, on a downward curve, so I don't know, we're trying. There's a very fair chance that I'm not targeting the right people or whatever it is. There's a lot that can go wrong. You never really truly know what people want or you know, if people who like a certain artist will like your music. It could be the song, I don't know, but I'm gonna try again next time. I'm not gonna give up. I see a lot of videos of these people using these conversion campaigns. It's just like skyrocketing their listeners and their streams, which again is not changing much at all either. I am at 400 99 followers so that has been gradually just going up and if I can make my Sarah Kendall followers transfer over eventually we'll see then this number might be higher as well but it might not because I don't know if they will transfer over I'm gonna show you my say what you want streams in particular because that's the song I'm advertising I'm at 970 streams which is good it probably would have happened if I wasn't running these ads I probably would have a lot lesser number than this as a new artist who started this year, the algorithm is not in my favor right now. My music is not going on Discover Weekly. This is just like organic streams with the ad. I'm still spending $10 a day on these ads. Keep that in mind too. I'm probably going to move down to five because this I don't see any gradual growth here. In the last 28 days, 292 people have been listening, but there's 970 streams. I could be wrong, but if that means that people are listening to it over and over again, like that's great. I'm not sure how accurate these analytics are, but the save rate is like half. Half the people that are listening to this are saving it. So that's actually really good. The rest of my tracks like are not reaching the right people clearly. That in a way tells me that this conversion campaign is doing work. I can choose to look at these results a few different ways. There's so many factors that can affect the outcome of these ads. It's the song, it's the ad itself, what moving image you're using, it's the part of the song you're using, and it's your targeting. So this is my ads manager, this is business manager on Facebook. I have three active ad sets right now. So you have your campaign, you have ad sets on your campaign, then you have your ads. And the other thing is I've set up a pixel, a Facebook pixel. So I'm gonna show you what my pixel is tracking, the page it's bringing people to when they swipe up, and then what happens after that. I'm targeting different demographics with these three ads. My cost per result is like 15 cents, 17 cents, and 19 cents. So overall pretty low. I've spent 127 on this. I should probably stop this ad immediately. So I'm going to show you this. I'll show you my ad. My Facebook pixel is tracking who swipes up initially and views my landing page. This is my ad. What's happening is my song is playing. If you see this on Instagram stories, if you're interested, you'll, you'll swipe up on Listen Now and it's gonna bring you to this page. It's part of my website, so I'm in full control of this. And that could be an, a factor in this as well. I know some people use Tone Den and like hyped it. If you've used that, let me know. I've only had experience using a landing page that I made. You'll get here when you save up on my ad. I just have my single art and then you can listen on Spotify or listen on Apple Music. So I'm pretty sure my Facebook pixel is just tracking people who get here. And what's interesting is when I had the Facebook pixel track people that actually clicked through, it was really hard for Facebook to track anything because it wasn't even reaching the minimum number of conversions, which is 50. It told me we can't track anything here. So I need to work on that too. And I'm just being transparent here. Perhaps that's quite embarrassing, but whatever. So it brings you here. It says, listen on Spotify. And then I direct people directly to the song. That's what I did. I can do a full video on Facebook pixel. That's a whole nother thing. But I just wanted to show you how I set it up and what people are seeing. So those were the results of my most recent conversion campaign. I'm probably gonna stop running it very soon just because I'm still not really getting the results that I want from it and I have a lot more learning to do. So I guess I'm making this just to let you know that if this happens, don't give up because I've seen it work for other people. This can happen and I think it's just gonna require more trial and error for me to get the results I want. I think overall using a conversion campaign is a better idea than using a traffic campaign because it's actually tracking people that take action whereas traffic campaigns just like want 
link clicks. They'll include bots and like fake clicks. You don't want it to be retargeted to more bots. Overall, at least my followers are going up. And the other thing is actually the most this has helped me on is Instagram followers. That's definitely the work of the ads. And that's a good thing too, because hopefully they'll stay engaged and want to listen to my future music. If you're going through this, stick with it. It will work out if you put the time and work in to make it work out for yourself. Other than this, I'm not sure what the best way to promote music is right now. I'm gonna keep hustling on trying to make these conversion campaigns work. My other plan is just to try to release more music more often. And hopefully the transition of my Sarah Kendall tracks over to Lynx will also help that. I have no idea how that's gonna work. That's probably gonna be the next video. <sighs> Wish me luck with that one. I really don't wanna lose my progress under Sarah Kendall. Anyways, I hope that this was helpful for you in your journey of trying to figure out how to promote your music. I'm not gonna give up on using conversion campaigns. I'm still gonna keep trying, just so you know I'm with you and keep pushing your music out and trying to use these ads because I know eventually it'll hit. Thanks so much for watching to this point if you're still here and like and subscribe. I hope it's helpful for you. So I'll see you next week. Bye.